I want to go back to your early March discussion that you had with Secretary Yellen on Women's Day on womanomics. I thought it was profoundly, profoundly important. And within that was a comment from uh, Secretary Yellen, no hostile questions, just clarifying questions. I'd like you to clarify right now what you need from the developed countries as we come out of pandemic. Well, thank you very much, Tom. Uh, and what we need from uh, developed countries to support developing countries uh, is a recognition that this is a multi-speed recovery and that countries that enter this crisis with limited fiscal space, with more vulnerabilities, and currently have less access to vaccines, need to be supported for the benefit of the world. Today, uh, the G20 gave its blessing for a new $650 billion SDR allocation. This is one concrete way in which we can use the strength of the 190 members to support those that are in more difficult positions by boosting their reserves. Divergence is the word of the moment. In your financial stability report, the acclaimed Green Book, which I read uh, each spring meeting, you speak about an asynchronous and divergent moment. We have an asynchronous and divergent pandemic, all of us focused on the challenges, say, of Brazil and indeed the unique challenges of India as well. Maybe that's the turf of David Malpass and the World Bank, but what can the IMF do to assist these nations beleaguered by COVID? First and foremost, we provide clear and compelling case for accelerating vaccinations everywhere. The world economy is going to be $9 trillion richer between now and 2025 if vaccinations are accelerated and if countries like Brazil and India are in a position to do more to get out of the health crisis. Uh, and of course, the fund has been there for the most vulnerable members with significant emergency financing. We still have a large uh, capacity should conditions be such that our members need more from us. I must ask Dr. Gorgieva, who pays for this? The, the heritage of this debate in the United States is the U.S. taxpayer picks up a very large share of IMF financing. Tell us within the new regime that you perceive for your International Monetary Fund how this transfer of aid to less developed countries will occur. Who will pay for it? Well, fortunately, the... IMF is structured to take advantage of 190 members. And that means that what we project is a unity that lifts up the uh, conditions for growth everywhere and that, of course, benefits the U.S. economy. When it comes down to SDRs, the good news is that it costs nothing to taxpayers. Why? Because what they represent is truly a way for the IMF to provide a reserve asset mm -hmm. at no cost to its members. Uh, and uh, more importantly, when you look at the cost-benefit equation, when the rest of the world is doing better, that translates through the transmission line of economic relations in the U.S. Mm -hmm. doing better, and of course, vice versa. Now that U.S. economy is recovering faster, it has a positive spillover on the rest of the world. Dr. Gorgiev, in the time that we have left, and I've got eight other ways to go here, and Eric Martin, our wonderful IMF reporter, needs me to ask six questions. 
I don't have time for. What I do have time for is climate change. You will meet this afternoon with John Kerry spearheading President Biden's climate change effort. You need the United States to back you on climate change. How do you convince Americans to help with what your shop calls the gigantic domino, which is the Asia-Pacific region, to get them to a better state? We uh, found out from this pandemic how interdependent we are as human species and how dependent we are on nature. And in that sense, an investment to fight climate change is an investment in our own future whenever we are on this planet. But beyond that, the great thing about uh, the innovation with which climate change is being addressed is that investing in green infrastructure <clears throat> translates into growth and green jobs. In other words, in positive impact on the U.S. Uh, economy. We know for a fact that, uh, for example, renewable energy generates seven times more jobs than traditional uh, fossil fuel-based energy. And if we are keenly interested in a vibrant economy, low-carbon, climate-resilient economy is the way to go. And on top of it, it provides space for U.S. Mm -hmm. companies innovating right. to come forward and build uh, businesses uh, that impact the rest of the world. In other words, competitive strength right. for the U.S. I have just a minute left, Dr. Gorgieva. I was speaking with our Guy Johnson of London, and he and I were talking about the triumph, which is how the United Kingdom has been leading in getting people away from death and away from hospitalizations on COVID. What did Boris Johnson in the United Kingdom do right? The um, uh, attention that is being paid to accelerating vaccinations is very important. We see it country after country that the, the faster uh, you get into a better place with the pandemic, the faster the economy uh, recovers. Uh, and also the fact that there was an inclusive process around no. uh, how to impose lockdowns and when to lift them uh, up.